All right, and then the last little thing we can do um, is actually create signed forms. First of all, I'll just give a quick description of a signed form and, and why you might want to use it. Um, so a signed form is basically a link that will navigate someone to a page where they can put in their name and email. And once they enter that in, it'll basically allow them to work through and sign that document, right? All just driven by one link. Um, reasons you may want to do that is like maybe for a something like a W9, you don't want to manually send that out to everyone. Maybe when you hire someone, you're just going to send them one big onboarding email and you just want to put a link that says click here to submit your W9. So you would create a sign form and then put that link into the email. And then it's just as good as if you sent it out directly to them. I do want to highlight these do consume API credits when you use a sign form. So if you want to roll something like this out, it's just important to know that there is that element of cost. Now, it's still going to be a lot faster than sending them out manually. So you kind of have to do the pro con of the time saved versus the cost per document and see where that break even is for you. Um, but once we're in here, it's a pretty quick little process. So first we'll go ahead and choose a template. Um, there are a couple rules in there. Like if you have multiple signers, all of them need to have a field added before you can do this. So if something doesn't pop in there, there's that little learn more button and it'll highlight kind of why a template might not appear. Um, moving down the page, we'll go ahead and give this a name. So in this case, we're just going to give it a nice simple name, you know, W9 sign form. Um, we can choose the number of responses that we want to allow on this. And, you know, again, that might seem silly at first, but knowing that there's a cost to each of these submissions, you might want to keep these low and regenerate them regularly, just in case they ever fall into the wrong hands. You know, someone could consume a bunch of API credits pretty quickly. Um, if you are using sign forms, um, enforcing OTP or, or kind of that second level of verification is probably a good idea. Um, so if you have that on, rather than allowing them to just fill in their info and sign, they would fill in their info and then be emailed the document to sign through their email. So it's just another layer, layer, layer of verification to make sure that they actually are that person. Um, and then lastly, you can set an expiration date on this. So generally, I when I do these, I'll set a maximum responses, but not make it expire on a certain date. If it's something I'm going to reuse for a long time, but you can say, you know, it only has a couple months of life. So once you have that created, then you can go ahead and click on the little three dots and copy that URL. And when someone clicks that URL, it's basically going to pop up a little page like this. Um, they're going to enter their name and email. And in this case, I don't have OTP on, so it's just going to allow me to sign. Um, but once I click start signing, it just pulls up our document just like it would if they were emailed this doc and they can confirm and kind of work through the fields. And then at the very end, again, based on our settings, in this case, we're allowing them to, um, you know, take the document with them. So if we go one more slide forward, we'll see a little place to go ahead and either download or have that document emailed out to me.